If innovation is an art, our speakers are our modern day Picassos. So this next speaker is no exception. He is the co-founder as well as the chief operations officer at Entire Solutions. He was the country consultant for Google Asia Pacific from 2012 to 2014 and was the first recruit by Google for the Sri Lanka and Maldives for initiatives from Google. As the country consultant, he was in charge of all the engagements to and from Google for Sri Lanka, which included digital practice, policy framework, um, publisher, and video and telco partnerships, to name a few. Among all this, he is a keynote speaker, presenter, and moderator for countless events. He was even invited to speak in the inaugural TEDx in Sri Lanka on the topic of entrepreneurship. Everyone, please welcome on stage the one and only Rohan Javeder. Good evening. Wow. Okay, let's do that again. Entrepreneurs, right? What do you entrepreneurs, people who are going to make a tent, who are going to create products that are going to what, universe tenting, paradigm shifting, earth shattering, brainwashing, right? So, good evening. Good evening. So, uh, I've been given like 30 minutes, right? Uh, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, my journey and then uh, what I've learned and uh, the things I screwed up and things that really work for me. Uh, then I want to open up for Q&A. Before that, like all of you are here because you want to be entrepreneurs? Yes? So by the way, I want to introduce Mr. David, who is my roommate uh, at university. He and I go back a long, 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 long years. Uh, like uh, looking at about 35 years of his here. And so good to see him. You know I love you, right? So, um, uh, how many of you here want to be entrepreneurs? Nobody wants to be entrepreneurs? Okay, one person. Keep your hands up. I want to see this. Up, up, up. Convincing. You are convinced, right? We are in the entrepreneurship. We are here for this entrepreneurship conference, right? Okay. Um, how many of you are studying in universities? All of you. Doing something on the other. How many have a decent relationship with your parents? That you are okay with your mother and father not being kicked out of So let me ask you this question. How many of you want to drop out of your university degree program? Go against your parents' wishes. Come your entrepreneurship program. How many of you are willing to make that kind of sacrifice? Now you are doubting yourself, no? Now you are thinking. Does it really have to be that hard? <laughs> Someone should be a lot more easier, right? Uh, so I think for me, you could probably, hopefully, you don't have to do all of that, right? But whatever the idea you have, you have to believe in it that much. You have to have that conviction and the belief that this is whatever idea that I'm chasing, it's really going to make a difference. That's a conviction I would like you all to have before you start on an entrepreneurship journey. If you have a doubt, if you have a doubt with your team, if you are not believing that you can really make a success, I think you really need to start going back to the drawing board and uh, kind of think about why am I lacking that conviction? Okay? Let me let me answer that question in another way. Oftentimes, and maybe that I disagree with a lot of things, huh? In entrepreneurship class, I'll just tell you. I think it's good to for you to talk to him about it. I have a very different point of view. The other thing I want to ask him is that don't always think about this new novelty, innovative idea. Right? You don't necessarily, if you, entrepreneurship is not only about coming up with this unicorn or a very unique solution that never existed in this universe and paradigm. Right? You can be a great entrepreneur just by doing something better. Right? So my entrepreneurship started in the university days when I was with him. So yes, my entrepreneurship, my first entrepreneurship was I was printing, burning series and selling it in the university. As one of the customers. He was one of the customers. I sold it to him. It worked. He got married to the girls. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> he gave it to me. 
So my first, when I was 2021, my first entrepreneurship thing was learning series and selling. Because at that time, unlike your know, MP3 and all that, and all of that didn't happen. People listened to music on series. Right? That was then. Then about 10 years ago, I started my second, more or less like a serious private business, private limited business. And that went bankrupt. So after failure, when I tell this very openly, very embarrassingly, that I had to sell my wife's wedding jewelry to come out of debt. And true story. And it's not an easy thing to hear. I got into debt. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just paying. And I realized that before I do it, I was in debt. Millions. Right? So it was very hard lessons to learn. So four years ago, three years ago actually, I, I started my third more or less the company uh, called Antaya Solutions. Uh, so when the Amita called me up and asked me, would you like to give a speech about entrepreneurship? I said, I am still not a, I still have made it, right? You know, I'm not like this guy who made a billion dollars out of it and kind of a, made it big. I'm still building the brain. Find, while I'm trying it, right? Because sometimes entrepreneurship is like that. You have to build a plane while flying it because if you stop building it, it will crash. So I haven't made it yet. So I want to give you that disclaimer. So sometimes my story might be a little different. So the most important things I learned uh, about being an entrepreneur, first thing is that you don't have to be the guy with the greatest new novelty idea. I started my business in digital marketing, right? Antai Solutions is essentially a digital marketing company. I got 25 people working for me now. And then it basically served or serving is in a customer set that already been serviced by so many different companies. But it's just that we believe and we know with our know-how and expertise and my experience in working for Google that I can do it better. And by being able to do it better, I have carved out a space in the market that was not delivering value to the customer. Right? So, again, I want to highlight this. You don't have to necessarily come up with the next big idea, but if you can find an industry or something that is under service, the way you feel that with my idea I can service better, you can actually start building a very successful business. The first thing. The second thing I want to tell you is in terms of running a business. Now, all of you must be like about 25, less than 25. It's really important you find people who complements to what you know. Right? I am the sales and the business development and the flash guy. Honestly, in my company, I don't do shit. Right? Everyone knows. <laughs> My business partner is a technical genius. He gets all the work done. What I'm good at is business development and sales. And that's what I do. You get what I'm saying? So it's really important when you are thinking about building a business, find people who are not like you, who are basically have opposite skill sets, different skill sets that is needed. So I am the upper, op like, I look at the balance sheet and the sales and all that in my company, I'm very optimistic. Oh, we can do great and great. My business partner is the complete opposite. He's the pessimist. He's like, no, Rohan, it's going to be tough. It's going to be, you know, so we complement each other. You know what I'm saying? So when you are starting thinking about building a business, make sure that you find people who are not agreeing and thinking in the same way, who knows the same thing as you, but find people who knows or who disagrees with you bit more because I think that's really important especially when you're doing business. Some of the other things is that you have to be very good at three things. You have to be very good at you have to stay focused to three things. First thing, sales. Revenue, revenue, revenue. Because oftentimes I have seen businesses, startup ideas, just did not get enough revenue to sustain itself. Disappear. Because I know that we are going to get into a phase of investors and money and all that. I am usually not a guy who endorses it too much. Right? Contrary to popular belief. What I believe is that you should have a product that is good enough and you should focus on sales. 
get the revenue with bootstrap it type of a thing. Right? That is my philosophy. You may have a different philosophy. So sales is something you must think about. The second part of it is what are the problems you are really, really solving? It's really important to figure out are you solving a big enough problem? And I think this is important. I'm sure other speakers will speak about it. Oftentimes your ideas fail because you didn't solve a big enough problem to a large enough audience. And if you don't have that figured out, you probably potentially do not have a good entrepreneurial idea. The third part is people. When you are a startup, you have to, you have nothing to hang on to people. When we basically started off, people joined our company more like a favor. Honestly. Right? And we kept them based on relationship. Not because you, we probably were not the company who can pay them the best salary. We were not the guys who had the best perks. We were obviously not the company who had the best offices like this kind of a cool office we still don't have. Right? So it was hard. But when you are working with those people and if you are the founder, you are, in, you are responsible for sticking those people together for the purpose, for your vision. And there will be people, if you believe in it, if your conviction is strong enough, who will align with you. So we were very blessed. We had an amazing bunch of people who left very important. Like we had Dilma marketing manager who left her Dilma role and took a 50,000 pay cut to join our company as a staff, who believed in our company and what we are trying to do. I think those are some of the three things that I think are really, really important. So, then, sorry, there's one more thing I think is really important. How many of you come from finance background? Financial spectrum? Finance? Nobody. Okay, for three years, we got, we didn't get this right, and I think we are getting this right now. Understanding of cash flow, what does it take to run a business, balance sheet, basic understanding about these things are really important. I think it's really, really important and one of the big mistakes and I think it's a, it sounds like really silly for me to say this, having been doing this for so long. It took us like three years to just get that discipline in. Because when you are scaling a business, when you are running a business, without you knowing, expenses catch on. And if you don't have enough money in your bank account, that creates tremendous amount of pressure for you. And that usually comes from not understanding how are you going to hire, what salary are you going to pay, how does it pay, what are the you know, laptops you need, what do you need, office space. And I have seen this again and again, people who have spent money way before they actually had anything and kind of burn because they didn't have the money to keep up. And that's a really, really bad place to be. So you have to be very, very conscious about it. So these are like the three, four stories uh, I have to tell you. I mean, I can tell you millions and one stories about uh, customers and all that. But I like to hear because all of you guys are like very passively listening to me. Like, uh, and nobody asks questions. It's really weird. If you guys are going to be like startup founders, you should be like punching through and aggressively asking questions and challenging people. You can't be passive, right? Listen, I was when I was at Google. I left Google to start up my company, right? So when I was at Google. I was like, I was booked every day like to speak and people say please come and talk to us about digital, all of that, right? And I was only representing Google. But when I left Google, I had a much more like an understanding about digital marketing because I started talking about Facebook and all of the other stuff. But the people, the same people who gave you appointments didn't give me any appointment, right? So it's really hard. So what you have to respect this one word I learned called hustle, right? Where you just keep pushing forward, keep at it. So I think it's really important. So I don't want you guys to be passive. You guys need to be aggressive and start asking questions and challenging people. I think it's really important as a, as a startup and as a person who's going to be an entrepreneur. So I would like to take some questions before I get into maybe some more other points I want to make. Any questions? Anyone wants to ask? No. Anybody from Morocco? Nobody from, there are people from Morocco? Anybody from Pera Lady? Nobody from Pera Lady? Where are you guys from? Huh? 
Where are you from? I have not been using the mic all this time. No, 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 no. Very good. You heard, no? Did you all hear? Right. Any questions? At least one question? Come on. Seriously? So why are you all here? Huh? You can ask the question in English. Don't be afraid if you want to ask in Signala. Unfortunately, it's my mistake. I am not very good in Tamil, but you can ask me any questions in any language. I am happy to answer it in any way. Anyone? No questions? Right. Um, what else should I say? Um, so I covered about people, I covered about finance, I covered about sales, I covered about the idea. Okay. Um, how many of you are looking for investor kind of a thing to start the business? Anyone? Working with investors? Anyone? What? You all still don't know? Anyone who has an idea about what you all want to do? At least? Have you thought about the idea? No? Wow, tough crowd. Probably the toughest I have seen. You should get at least one or two questions. No questions. Yeah, finally. I, if I had a gift, I would have definitely given it. Tough crowd? How much are you given? What the hell, man? Like, yes, man. I uh, just wanted to check, um, I am a personal university student, I work with uh, a network of angel investors. Um, so one thing that I've seen is with undergraduates who are also working on entrepreneurship ideas and trying to get started. Um, one thing is how do they actually balance their studies and then also work on their startup? Is it more like a project that they are doing from an point of view or how do they take it forward because investors are a little bit uh, not too keen on investing in startups where there are university students involved because they can't commit time to it. So what's your take on that? Let me, let me first give you my honest, brutal honest. Sri Lanka is not ready for entrepreneurship. It's, it's us that was pushing this because we, I think we are really stupid, right? Listen, entrepreneurship is not for everyone. If you can be really, if you can work, if you can work for a great company and really rise in that company, that's great too. There's nothing wrong with that. I am pretty sure the guys who work in MAS makes like even few possible. My designation is chief operating officer, right? But essentially, I am the monkey who does everything, right? Starting from bringing paper to the printer, food when customers come to give them shortage, make tea sometimes, clean up the, all of that, right? And my friend, I, you know, who's at an probably at MAS or a brand mix, makes three times, four times easy money and probably travels and gets to do a lot of things he loves as well. Probably have more work-life balance as well. So my question is that, again, it's something that I think you have to realize for yourself. I personally don't think life has something called balance. And I don't think people agree with me. People talk about this world. I think it's absolute bull crap. Right? I personally think I, I currently now work, now I have three jobs essentially, right? But he, he forgot to mention is I work for Antara as CEO, do the sales and finance and business and all that. Because uh, I had to do another job. I took on another job with this company called Power Networks, right? This cybersecurity company. And I'm also a consultant to a company. Do you think I have work life balance? I don't. Right. So I think I don't believe you can have it all. I think you have to give up certain things to get something. Why did Mark Super be dropped out of power? Essentially, he could have, you know, he could have probably stayed on, right? But I'm saying I think we we like to believe in a world where there is perfect things happen, but the real life doesn't work like that. The situation is that, um, what are you willing to give up for what do you believe in? And I think that's a question mark you need to ask yourself. You have to be clear enough. And I know that it's not a favorite choice. This is not a favorite answer. People will have different, this is my opinion. I never had a, I never had a, like a, I don't think that's okay. But I, I never really had a moment in my life where I can say that I have this perfect balance. You know what I'm saying? 
uh, whatever I wanted, I have pursued it with all my heart, and I think it had worked. Uh, but you know, of course, your family is supportive. My wife is very understanding. She's still married to me, so you know, there are things that helps you along the way. But those are important stuff. But I think it's something you have to make a decision. The reason why I'm saying is that the only commodity in this world that is really precious, which we don't value, is time. Right? Every time I put time on ABC things. Now, every time I've come here and I'm spending two hours here, I have taken away from either Antaira or Parvati, which I've got done maybe five emailers and ten something. Right? So, you have to guard your time the best way and you have to think about how where am I spending my time where I feel, I believe that I will be more successful and I think that's the assessment you have to do. So I don't believe it. Uh, I was not a great student with these are the bright guys in my industry. I'll just put it this way. Right? So I'm saying you have to guard your time and think about where you're spending the time most time. Did I answer the question? I wish I could tell you don't worry you can do both. I think I don't believe it and I don't think that is true. You will have to give up in something. Maybe you cannot be a class, you can't get a A class or a first class. Maybe you can be a general class, but because you have to allocate time, right? That's the only thing that you're fighting. Because you have to spend time on this. Any other questions? Yes, sir. You just said that uh, you were a part of digital marketing, yeah? Yes. And uh, you said that you believe that you could do it differently. That there are other digital marketers rather than another company. Yeah. So, why is it that you do it? Because I can't do that. Why do you do it? Why do you do it? You are the freaking rock stars in digital marketing. Simple. <laughs> no, no. Listen. I think ours is driven by intellectual property. So, digital marketing, if you look at it, primarily has two components people who does a lot of creative work, people who does a lot of data and analytics driven work. We belong into the data and analytics driven space. That means looking at, you know, mathematics like how does it work, how can I spend two dollars here and generate ten dollars there, right? There are a lot of digital marketing companies who does like great creatives on Facebook and videos and all. We are probably not as strong there. We want to be good at it, but we are not there. But where we really dominate is like if you say I want, I'll, I'll give you hundred dollars, generate three thousand dollars. That's probably where we will be the best. There could be other companies who are equally good, but I think we package it well and sell it well. Because remember, it is not only about that you are good at it, but it's also about being able to convince the customer to choose you over others, right? Competition will always be there. And there will always be guys who are better than you or worse than you. That's part of the game. But the situation is that among that landscape, how can you be? Right? Listen. If we were believing in the greatest technology, my firm believe is that Windows should have never dominated the world. It's probably the happiest product ever. Right? But they did. Right? So you have to have a great product, but there's also other components you have to wrap around it, like your selling, your pitching, how do we you know position it, how do you message it, how do you win the customers up? Because it's also about winning in the business, right? Winning in the marketplace with the customers. So we believe that we have a great know-how in IP in terms of performance marketing by right? really doing the analytics works and data and driving business for customers on digital. But I think we also can do sales much better than others. You know what I'm saying? That's the conclusion. Any other questions? No other questions? Please. I am supposed to take three more questions. Danika is starting a little bit late. Any more questions? Yeah. Ah, you are come. Sorry, but I didn't see you. Uh, no other questions? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I, what I say, what I say, I don't believe in. I don't believe Sri Lanka is entrepreneurship ready. We want it to be ready and we, a lot of people are pushing hard for the last, I think, six, seven years. But the, listen, right? I'll give you a simple answer, right? What does as an entrepreneur, what is your biggest problem? Your biggest problem is money, right? Because 
you you have to scale your business up to a level before it can sustain itself so someone needs to handhold it up to now right i don't believe that the ecosystem around money i'm not talking about investors alone right but the financial institutes appetite for startups how they measure risk and all that that mentality has really evolved uh, in the market um, i mean i mean i struggled a lot i bank with uh, i should mention the name <laughs> right i i bank with a, a company uh, a bank in sri lanka one of the leading banks supposed to be recommended i asked who's the best bank who's friendly who's supposed to give us a or sudden overdraft if i need to do all of that and uh, and i think uh, i mean after doing business with them for two and a half years i struggle a lot uh, it just doesn't happen that way. it's not that easy right and then what you do is that you are and the other part i forget to mention this is that danika will agree customers never pay on time never ever ever in sri lanka pay on time right yeah, i mean the biggest customers pay the last like they delay your payments like 6 months it's almost like you have to beg i have a two be i have two people in my company who are just not doing anything they are just following up on payments that's it and it's one of the worst things in the world in sri lanka and some people just take the uh, service never pay right so these are the challenges for you because especially when you are running a business what you need is you have to pay salary every month you have to pay expenses every month and if you don't have the money for the services you deliver coming in so that is a unique problem for me because i'm a services related business maybe for a product business maybe for a subscription type of a product business it could be different because you might take the money up front then that will be different but i know for a fact that anywhere if you have customers who owe you money it's really hard to get in this kind and that's one of the reasons so that is one of the reasons why i say it's really hard the second part of it is that i think from a tax standpoint just because you're a startup you don't get any benefits in the market in the country right uh, sri lanka we don't have that structure where i mean we still have to pay the taxes as if we are any size company there's no real benefit for you like for what is the i'll give a simple one. what is the tax rate in sri lanka where you have to pay start paying back if you're making i think last time i checked when we registered 3.75 million a quarter So if you are making 3.75 million in Sri Lankan rupees for three months, you have to start paying taxes, VAT and all that type of thing, right? And I think it's 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 really it's really hard when you start getting into that because I would have expected a bit more benefits in that area from the government. So these things are not in place. But you know, saying these are the one thing. Well, one last message: you can never, ever, ever, ever. complain about how bad things are you have no right for it if you are an entrepreneur you have to make it work do what you got to do like today am i happy doing the three rows and drill certainly not i hate it but if that's what it takes for it to pursue it you have to. you can never complain about how people are how the bad economy is how the country is how the banks are Yeah, all of that. You have to understand this is the market. You have to make this model, the ecosystem, as it is, work. That is your talent as entrepreneur, right? If you are ever get into a complaint uh, situation, I don't believe you are an entrepreneur. You need to know the risk. You need to know the challenges. But you have no right to complain because this is a choice you have made, and you have to make it. Okay, one last question, and then I will hand it over to Danika. Oh, what? Any questions? Oh, no questions. Well, I believe that you guys learn a bit more if you ask me questions. But okay, then thank you very much. I'll be here if you guys wanted to talk to me afterwards or whatever. Uh, and I will hand the mic over to you. Thank you.